Hello, welcome to Edge CGI. My name is Jason Alt. This is part three of a five part tutorial series. In this video, we're going to look at UVW unwrapping, and then in the next video, we'll be looking at doing some texturing and then rendering. So, to get started here, what we're going to do is I've put this modifier on here, which deforms the chest that we modeled. So, I'm just going to right click to convert this object to an editable poly. And that will just keep the changes we made with the modifier and let us get back to edit poly mode. So, under our modify panel in this drop down, we're going to go down to unwrap UVW. And this is going to put the unwrap UVW modifier here. So, we're going to open up the UV editor. And right now the UVs are just kind of a jumbled mess, so we're just going to select everything here and just kind of move this off to the side. And actually, whenever I start unwrapping, I like to just put a planar map. We'll do it from the top view, that's fine. So I'll do this from the top. And I'm going to move that off to the side. Now the reason I do that is it gets rid of some kind of broken seams the green seams that you see here are you know kind of what we want to see this also allows me to start separating out parts of this let me make this a little bit bigger here so we can see and so what i'll do is i'm going to turn on element mode and i'm just going to start clicking the different elements here and separating them okay so that part's done Oops. Zoom in here. This doesn't want to move. There we go. Okay. So I've separated this out into different pieces. So now what I need to do is separate it even further so that I can unwrap this. So I'm going to select the polygons that make up the center here. And I'm going to deselect the ones on the bottom. And I'm going to hit Grow, my selection. And let's see. I actually got a bit more of this than I want. So I'm going to undo here. And I'm just going to go ahead and hold control and select these polygons. Grow would have been really nice because that would have been quick, but uh, it was selecting more than I really needed to select. And it would have taken me longer to deselect all of that than to just go in here and select these one at a time. So once I have these selected, I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say break. And then that just allows me to, and you'll see the green seams now show up around the edges here. Okay, so that just separates these parts. I'm going to do the same idea with the bottom here. So I'm just going to select all of the bottom. I'm going to right click again and say break. So there's the bottom of my mesh. And since we are looking at this in the top view, basically a top down based on the UVs, I'm going to go to Tools and say Flip Horizontal. And it doesn't look like it um, does much, but since we're looking at this top down, we're actually looking at this part flipped. So I'm just flipping it back around to make things easier. Okay. So now we're going to select the sides here. We're just kind of separating these pieces out to make them easier to unwrap and for texturing. I'm just going to break those. And I have something else that I'm going to end up doing uh, with these, uh, which we'll get to. And then we've got all of the sides here. Flip that around and get the other sides. Part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up so that they align in a certain way so they're easier to texture for another part that we're going to do, which is going to be using render to texture. Break those away. And then, let's see, finally that just leaves these parts. Let's see. 
I'm trying to think of my wood grains are going to run around this way, which means they're going to go this direction. So I'm kind of looking at what direction my wood grain would go with all of these. So what I might end up doing is um, I'm going to leave these kind of as is. Um, tell you what, we can just go ahead and separate these up. Let's see what we all have selected here. All right. So I'm going to select both sides here, but then I'm going to go through and I'm going to deselect each of the ends here. Because again, I'm going to make them align a certain way so it's easier to texture them. I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Okay, so I'm going to right click again and say break, and we'll move those out of the way. All right. So finally, that just leaves um, unwrapping these. I've kind of broken the parts away from each other that I want to break apart. Um, the nice thing is the bottom of this box, it's already done. I don't have to do anything really to it, so that's done. Anything that I get in a sort of finished, I move it kind of... Um, my organization is anything that's kind of flattened and unwrapped, I'll move to this side. Anything I still have to unwrap will be on this side. And that's just how I like to work. Um, so this part makes up the entire top uh, and outside. Now, something I'll usually try to do is I'm going to use this quick peel. And actually, that works great. So it just takes everything and aligns it uh, nicely and kind of um, displays it um, the way I would do it or the way I would want to do it with unwrapping. Um, and this quick peel tool works really, really great when your pieces are kind of separated like this. It doesn't work on everything. I normally try it. If it looks good, I go with it. If it doesn't, then, you know, I'll go about it the hard way. Um, so I'm going to do the same idea. I'm going to select these sides, which they should quick peel. That looks good. And that one as well. So I'm going to just take both of those and move them off to the side here. And I'm going to rotate these 90 degrees and move them so they're a little closer together. Kind of like that. We want to maximize our objects being in this UV space, so uh, that's why I'm moving those that way. Okay. So these are all the ends here. Now, if I try to quick peel those, that's not obviously what we want. That's not good. So I'm going to break these uh, apart here just by going into my polygon mode. I'll select both on each side. And actually, what I can do is just select every other one. Kind of like so, and hit break, and it's like the last one I couldn't get there. Okay, I'm gonna rotate these 90 degrees, and I'm gonna go ahead and try quick peel now, um, and that's kind of straighten them all out. And when I say straight, I don't mean that they're um, Straight, I mean they're more closely representing the size of the actual polygon. So I'm going to go through and adjust them 90 degrees here, roughly 90 degrees. I think I might actually need to rotate these 90 degrees tall ways. Yeah, I do actually. Um, so that's okay, I'll just rotate them all together. Usually when I get objects that um, are going to be uh, put together, I'm going to end up packing those, and I'll show that here in a second. So I'll do the same idea, select every other polygon, right-click, break, and move these away from each other, quick peel, 
And then I'm going to align them tall ways, just like the other side here. All right. So I'm going to take all these parts. And I'm going to do what's called a pack. So I'm just packing them all into this space. And I'm going to move them back out of this space for now, but just so I have these ones all organized together is what I'm doing. All right, so then we've got these kind of really odd-shaped ones. Um, and they just make up all the pieces in between. So I'm just going to go to them and quick peel. And I'm not as worried about these ones just because these are... Um, they kind of make up the spaces in between the boards. So they kind of also need to be, and most of them are already kind of set up the right way, to where I want these to be running this direction. So the wood grain I'm putting on here is going to run left and right. And so I want them to end up making um, lines that are going uh, this direction on here. So I want these to kind of be this way. So they're kind of facing up and down. I'll do the same thing here, is just kind of quickly go in and line these up. Alright, I'm going to do the same idea with these. Pack. And I'm going to move those off to the side. Kind of like so. Alright, then we've got all the ends here. I'll do exactly the same thing. That I've been doing. I'll just speed this part up. Alright, so I'll pack those ones like I did the other ones. And again, move them off to the side. Alright, so we have the lock on the front. And these are all the, uh, basically the metal pieces that'll be on this chest. Um, so we're going to start off by and do a quick planar map. Just going to put our lock here, and then I'm going to say quick peel. And uh, it's not really the ideal shape that we want to have here. So, like I said, quick peel is not always going to be exactly what you want. So I'm going to just select the outer edge here by double clicking it. I'm going to scale this out a bit in all directions. I mainly want to make this so I can see it all the way around here. And it's got a little bit tall here, so, oops. For some reason, it, oh, I'm in element mode. That's my mistake. There we go. Okay, so we can see all the edges here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the inside. I'm going to select those from here. back into polygon mode and in this case I'm going to just scale this down in all directions because this is more likely going to get just painted like a dark color like a solid okay, kind of like that and then once I've got that I'm going to select everything and I'm going to say relax until flat and again this is another thing that sometimes works great sometimes in this case not so great so we'll just leave it as is it's uh, find the way it is. Okay, so that's going to get moved back over to the side. Now you can see the relative size of this lock is huge compared to the size of this. So what we'll have to do is a normalize to get all these things to be relatively the same size. Okay, we have the part on the bottom here. We'll just try our quick peel first. And, oh, it's good. The more complicated a shape gets or the more distorted or bent around it is, the harder it is for it to... Um, to really um, work well with quick peel. Okay, there's that. And then we have the two bands here. I'm going to try quick peel. And hey, those look good. Not going to mess with that too much. And then we've got all of the riveted parts. Again, I'm going to try quick peel. And that's perfect. Uh, and I'm going to pack those in as well. So. There we go. And those will get moved off to the side. 
Okay, the last part is fitting everything in here. So I'm going to speed the video up so you can see kind of what I'm doing, but uh, just for time, I'm going to speed it up so you guys can see that. Oh, and before I do that, I want to make sure to do the normalize thing I was talking about. So I'm not going to normalize the small parts. I'm going to normalize the big parts. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like. And then we'll speed the video up. So I'm selecting all the parts here, not the little weird ends and uh, rivets and stuff. So I'm going to click Normalize, which is uh, Rescale Elements. And when I do that, it makes all the objects relative to one another based on their size. So now I can go ahead and pack everything in. Now when I pack this in, I want to try to optimize my space in here because all of this stuff has to fit in this little box. So the way I'm going to do that is make sure that the biggest objects take up the most amount of space in there. So I'll start this and then I'll end up speeding up parts of it. And I can already see that I don't know that everything will fit based on that size, but I'm going to try it at uh, about this size and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so you can see how we have everything kind of put in here and arranged. Uh, the one thing you want to watch for is you don't have anything overlapping, so they can be pretty close together, but you don't want them to overlap. You also don't want them to go outside of this box. Uh, this is your UV space, so you need to stay inside of here. The other thing is we want to make sure that these side objects here are relatively the same size as the ones here, and they are, so um, we should be good. So... Um, that concludes part three of this tutorial series, so please stay tuned to part four where we're going to uh, cover the rendering and lighting and we're going to cover uh, doing a render to texture which will help with uh, some of the texturing parts in case that's not really a strong suit of yours. Thanks for watching Edge CGI and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you've enjoyed this tutorial. And thanks for watching.